So we're going to start off by taking a look at I.O. Setup. Now you can find this dialog in the Setup menu under I.O., so choose that. And this dialog allows us to label and format and map signal paths for Pro Tools inputs, outputs, buses and inserts. So in this view we can see inputs for a very basic Pro Tools system that's using built-in hardware on a Mac. Um, here's the outputs. Here are the available buses, and here are the inserts. Now we're going to come back to all that uh, in later videos. Um, but just an overview of what you're seeing here. Um, here we have the paths. So these are the main paths. And if you click the disclosure triangle, you'll see the sub paths for each of those main paths. You can option click a disclosure triangle, and it will either open them all or close them all. All right, here we have the format for those paths. So the main paths are stereo and then the sub paths are mono in this case. Um, up here we have the hardware that those paths are being mapped to. And that's showing the Pro Tools aggregate driver. And then this section here shows the mapping. So this is the uh, default mapping showing how the uh, built-in microphone main path is mapped as a stereo object to the analog inputs one and two of the Pro Tools aggregate driver. L and R stand for left and right, and M stands for mono. Okay, so in this image, uh, this is what uh, the input tab of the I.O. setup looks like on a typical Pro Tools HD system. This system's got two 96 I.O. interfaces, and you can see all the inputs uh, listed here. And this image is taken from a Pro Tools system with a DigiDesign 002R, uh, which is now an out outdated piece of equipment. Um, but it's an interesting one to take a look at because in this image we can see the ADAT inputs are available. The session sample rate is set to 44.1 kilohertz. But in this image, the session sample rate is set to 88.2 kilohertz. And the ADAT inputs are no longer available because ADAT doesn't support that sample rate. OK, back to my basic Pro Tools system. What can I do with the I.O. setup? Well, I can add and delete these paths. I can remap them to different sources or destinations. I can activate or deactivate these paths to manage my I.O. resources. And I can rename the paths to make them easier to identify. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at how you can use the ability to rename paths to set up custom labeling for your I.O.